want to thank you today for tuning in to HowBigIsGod.org, the fire, the blood, and the word. I just want to thank the Lord for a glorious day and that I know that he loves you very, very much and he loves me and that we can put ourselves in his hands today and see great and mighty and amazing things happen in our life. I don't care where you are in life. I don't care what's happening in your life. God can turn it around if you will allow him to. If you will get on the same path, that heavenly glorious path with Jesus, he can turn it around. Well, I just pray in Jesus' name as I share this lesson with you today that you will feel and have the power and the strength to turn those things around in your life when we're finished. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you come, be my te be the teacher. Share through me those, of what those out there need, what I need. And in Jesus' name, we take authority over and bind any hindering spirits to our hearing, to our being able to perceive what the Word of God is saying in Jesus' name. Lord, open the paths of our understanding. Help us to know, strengthen us by your might and our spirit, man. Open the eyes of our understanding that we be able to see clearly what you see, Jesus. That we know that we are victorious in everything we do if we submit our lives to you. We continue to walk in your blessing, in your word, and in obedience. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I just want to say, dear hearts, let's give God all the glory and the honor and the praises to him and to the Holy Spirit. We know he says that about himself, I am that I am. Well, what does that exactly mean? I am that I am. He's meaning he exists. He always will exist. There is no turning, changing in him. He is who he says he is, and he will be there forever. His presence will be there forever. And in heaven and in those things that we allow him to be in. And then when it's all finished, he's going to just wind this thing up, take all those, his children, into his bosom, into his presence, and he will eternally continue to be the great I am. He will continually to cre create. He will continue. I tell you, he gets so excited even here. When, when he allows a man or a man allows him to come into his heart, I should say, and that he sees your personality, he's, he gets so excited to see how you take his word and create wonderful things through your life to bless mankind and to be a, a, be a blessing to him that his word inside of you to bring forth fruit that blesses people everywhere you go. Bring forth inventions that blesses people wherever you go. And that even a simple invention can be bring the most joyous blessing to a person and to his life. And so we can be have all, I mean, we can ask God for what we need and trust and believe in him and he will be the great I am in your life, in my life. Hallelujah. Now, he says that he exists and always will. He says, I am the almighty God and I have power. All power and might belongs to me. Well, I'm going to take him at his word that all power and might belongs to him and that we know that 
you know, the enemy, he's kicking up a dust storm. He's trying to be, you know, God. He's trying to, because he said he lifted himself up above the throne of God and said, I will be the ruler. I will reign. But he got kicked out of heaven. But we know he's right here on earth kicking up a dust bowl of lies and indecision in people's lives and bringing about all kinds of havoc. But I want to thank the Lord. He says his might and power can make the earth tremble. And he said it's going to come a time that he will laugh when men say, I will lift myself up. Who does that sound like? Above his throne. That was Satan's M.O. Motor, uh, uh, modus, uh, 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 how do you say it? Mirandi. That's his actions. That's his way. But God's way is blessing. Men who have his nature, <clears throat> Satan's nature, are surely repeaters of his nature. So we surely see that today. And they are also acting like God. And we know that this will not continue. He said, this is why they will fail at trying to be God. But don't be deceived. He can turn things around and even use the enemy and his, his misgivings and his, his actions. He can allow that thing to run its course. And then God brings a blessing around and shows people, hey, you know, he was headed in the wrong direction. He was trying to take things in the wrong direction, but he hit a wall and bam, God shows up and he takes care of it. And he turns that thing around and uses it for his blessing. Sometimes the enemy can cause such uh, uh situations in people's lives that it causes them to call upon the name of the Lord. So if you think that is not getting the, the, uh, when it all shakes out, God still comes out victorious and his people, if they will just listen to him. And it says that <clears throat> God can change a nation in one day. That's in Isaiah forty twelve. Go read it. He said, I can take a nation and change it in one day. So what does that say about God? How great is God that he could take a nation and change it in one day? Well, I would, I mean, what can you say about that? How can you argue with that? And it says in Isaiah 40, 15, he is the majestic of the the majesty of the Lord. He can prolong the things for his seed. Satan can cause things and make it look like it's the end of all things. And even though we do, according to the word of God, see that there is things that are coming to an end. God said they would, but it will be in his timing and he can prolong his seed in the earth and give them what they need, regardless of the enemy's agenda. And he says, they, and we need to take to heart, it says in Isaiah 54, 17, and many have heard this scripture, quoted it many times, I have, but we need to start taking these things to heart like we never have before. He said, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. No weapon the enemy forms against us shall prosper. Let's believe that. And it goes on to say, and every tongue that shall rise, rise against us to condemn us, rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. You will prove it to be wrong because of your life, because you're trusting in God. And it says you can put it down by your, by your life and what you're living and knowing that God, in God, there's no weapon formed against you that, can pro that will prosper. For he said this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. So, you know, uh, you go argue with God about that. 
You, and when you feel weak and insignificant, you need to have these. I need to have these at our these scriptures at our disposal. We need to think on them and meditate on them till they become life in us. And that when something happens, it immediately comes out of us because it's become a part of us. We do things habitually, and when next thing we know, they become a part of us. We have certain habits. They become a part of us. So we can do the same with God's Word. We can make it a part of us by obeying and by doing and, and letting that word comes life in us and do those things and they will come automatically like a second nature to us. And I like that song, you know, when the enemy comes and he's blabbing his mouth. I like that song that this little gal has been singing and it's got this wonderful upbeat. When the devil, you know, talks his talk, she said, well, let me tell you about my Jesus, that he makes the blind to see. He raises the dead. He opens the prison doors. He saves us. Oh, let's talk about our Jesus, what he's doing. Let's sing about our Jesus, what he's doing. Let's praise about what he's doing, not what the devil's doing, but what God is doing. But we know that those praises can put down the enemy and we command him to put down his weapons in the name of Jesus and flee. Hallelujah. And then God sends his people along and they begin to, to say the right things and they begin to step up and they begin to share what God says about things. And the next thing you know... They, people around them, are, are sharing in the joys of God. This is what we must do when Satan, is, Satan and people raises their voice and taunts us and says what they're going to do. We can say, let me tell you about my Jesus, what he's doing. The one who got <clears throat> the victory for us. He doesn't lack a thing that we need. He has raised up that which has been lost. He can do that in our lives. The things that have been lost, he can raise up in our lives. He can resurrect them. The, the, the things the enemy has stolen, <clears throat> he can replace them quicker than a hiccup. He can restore our job, our home, our cars, whatever we've lost. If we trust in him and know that he is the great I am, that he will bring those things to you that you need. And you know what? You can say, make haste, Lord, to do it. Like David said, Lord, make haste to help me. Don't delay. Don't wait. I need your help right now in the immediate. And God is ever present. And when you begin to call on his name, he said, he shall deliver you. He shall save you. So let, whatever's going on, don't acknowledge the bad and let it take over and make depression and bring depression and bring dis more destruction. Begin to call on the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Then it says, <clears throat> One day he can just come along, you know, and the devil's blabbing his mouth and he can kick the chair right out from under him and say, who are you? And you know what? That's what he's doing now. There's many things that's being revealed. He's run his mouth until now. He's, he's getting egg on his face. And it, but we can't be hard-hearted and stubborn and cry babies. And feeling sorry for ourselves. The worst thing we can do is feel sorry for ourselves. And, you know, he's saying to us, stop it. Snap out of it. You don't have to let the enemy drag things away from you and, and take your, your joy. He might take possession of things for a while. But you know what? God will give them back and much, much more if you trust him. So... You know, 
in Proverbs 120, it says, if God was standing right in front of you right now, which he really is, and you are truly hearing his voice, he is saying to you, snap out of it. Come on, get with it. Shake yourself. I'm still here. You just can't see me. You just, you've caused, uh, allowed the enemy for a season to take your attention away from you. And you know that is true. These principalities, though, are low-level devils that we're allowing to take our attention away from God. And they're turning our heads from his greatness and his love. And he's, they're saying, he's de where is he? Where's your God? He's delayed. You know, this is what I hear people saying. You know, God has given up on us. Where is God? And that's not true at all. And he's saying, um, <clears throat> and when it happens, Satan, who's at work, is he's the one. He wants to make or convince you that God's doing it. He's the one that still kills and, and deceives you and steals from us. Then the powers of darkness, they come along. There's principalities and powers of darkness. And then they blind your eyes. That you can't see the truth. You see, you and I need to turn our, uh, things around and turn back to God. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. But, lean, but let him open your understanding. Let him show you that he's mighty. Give him an opportunity to uh, to take place, make a uh, room for him. And so, what do we do scripturally? What can we do? It says in Second Corinthians ten three through five. Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. We're not fighting, you know, a battle like David did. They had to fight that way. But now we fight by the Spirit. We, because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not of the flesh. But mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. You see, there's many strongholds that's taken place because God's people wasn't prepared. There was much weakness in the church. Weak messages. And they haven't been prepared. Their hearts haven't been prepared for battle to take the, to take and stand with the weapons of our warfare and spiritually pull down strongholds. We can do them in our lives, in our families' lives, in our nation. We can do this. And the more that we do it collectively, and the more that we, we pull together and we get on the same page as God, we can wreak havoc with the enemy. All of a sudden, you think all of these things happen just like, um, you know, in war. There's been wars where people threatened and they were, they were going to take over that territory that day and come up to the line and end up turning around and going back in the other direction. All of a sudden, what caused them to do that? I will tell you what caused that. It was Christian people pulling down strongholds and casting down these evil workings of the enemy. Jesus said we had power to do it. This is the most powerful thing we can do in prayer. And we must spend time in prayer. And we must do these things. If there's no way around it. We've got to obey God and his way of doing things. And now this is his way of the new covenant of doing things. Yes, then he may give you an assignment to go forward and do certain things and, and to speak certain things that will cause those uh, the light to shine on certain things and cause the problem to dissolve by his supernatural power. 
That's a mighty thing. That's an exciting thing. That's a wonderful thing. It says that we casting down imaginations and every high, lofty, destroying speculation that will exalt itself against the knowledge of God, bringing it into captivity, not dwelling on what the devil's saying he can do, but pulling that down, not having that image in your life, not allowing yourself to think ahead. Jesus said you had to take each day as it comes, for each day will have its own evils you'll have to deal with. So when you think ahead and you, the devil can take that and build a fortress in your mind of things that is going to happen that never happens that way unless you align with that and you allow those things to begin to produce because you are not casting down those reasons and imaginations and you have to replace those reasonings and, imag and imaginations and speculations with the word of God. No, Satan, I have victory in the name of Jesus. He said to cast you down, not to meditate on you and to allow, allow fear to take over in my heart. I cast those thoughts down. I will not think upon those things. I will not think about losing my house. I will not think about things that has not happened because I'm going to submit myself unto God and I'm going to commit everything to him. And he says, when I serve him, he takes care of me and he will see that I'm taken care of. But fear People sometimes say, I'm not fearful, but they are fearful because all their, everything is lining up with that. They are confessing. They say, well, I trust God, but yet they say, you know, what's going to happen to their wife? Uh, if this keeps going, what's going to happen? That God does not like for us to say those things. He wants to say, God is on the throne. He is able to show me what to do. His word is alive in me, and I will obey and do his word. His word says to trust in the Lord and lean not to my own understanding. Then it says, and to casting down, bringing into captivity. Bring those thoughts into captivity. Oh, no, you don't in Jesus' name. You're not going to rise up and produce in my life. Every thought to the obedience of Christ, they've got to bow their knee to the name of Jesus. And then it goes on there, understanding, <coughs> this is understanding why darkness takes place. In 2 Corinthians, therefore, it says, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received, we do not faint or lose heart. Now, so many people have fainted and lost heart. Have you fainted and lost heart? Yes, many have. And I tell you, it can make a person, if you continue to listen to the wrong thing, can shake you to the very foundation. But God said, no, no. Don't let those things shake you to the foundation. I'm not going anywhere. I'm still here. And it says, we have renounced, we renounce the hidden things of dishonesty, showing in, in uh, or shame, not walking in craftiness. We're not getting involved with that. We're not going to jump on that situation and be a part of that, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. But by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God, that we're walking uprightly. We're doing what the word says. Our conscience is clear. We're not allowing fear in. We're allowing blessing. We're allowing God in. In verse 4, it says, Whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Least the light, least the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is in the image of God, should shine unto them. Anytime God's light shines onto a situation, it's going to clear up the situation. 
any time that you set your mind to seeking God in the midst of everything and you let the light come in, it will drive the darkness away. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus, the servant, and ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts. We see the light now, the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. When we serve him and we're obedient to him. In Hebrews 2, 4 uh, through 9, it says, God also bearing them witness both with signs and wonders and with divers miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his will. And child of God, he is right here ready and willing. It's, he's not, we're not waiting on him. He's waiting on us so that he can perform these things in our life. That when he steps up, when we step up, he steps up. When we speak the word in season, he's right there to bring it to pass. He's waiting for us so that he can show his signs and wonders, preaching the gospel, ministering to people, saying, no, no, that's not the truth. The truth says that, th that Jesus had the truth and it will set you free. That we don't bow to the devil. We lift our hands in faith to the glorious God who is the God of our salvation. And he says, For unto the angels hath he put in subjection the world to come, whereof we speak. But one in a certain place, an angel questioned. It, he said, and testified, saying, What is man? What's so important about man? That thou art mindful of him, God. What are you up to? He says, thou madest that, or that the son of man, that thou visitest him. Why are you visiting mankind? What's going on? Thou madest him, Jesus, a little lower than the angels. Thou crownest him with glory and honor and didst set him over the works of of his hands, thou hast put him over the works of thine hands, for in that he put all things under him or in subjection. He secured our salvation, but he was a little lower than the angels for a bit. And it says, but left subjection, he left nothing that is put under him. He thoroughly purged the floor. He didn't leave one thing undone. But now we see not yet all things put under him. We see that he had everything because of Jesus' life and obedience and he coming to this earth and dying for us. Everything was in subjection, put in subjection to him. But one day he will give it back to God, it says. But it says, but we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death. He had to come in a human body, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. Now, if you didn't know that, I'm telling you that, that today. If you just happen to run across this program, he died for every man, woman, and child. They but just need to acknowledge that Jesus died for you and to ask him to come into your heart and live in you and forgive you of your sins. And he said he'll wash them in his own blood. He'll wash them completely away. You will have a new start because now you're a new man. But you can't walk according to the way you were walking, right? It says, for it, <clears throat> for the grace of God should taste Death for every man, for it became him or fitting for him, for whom are all things, and bringing many sons to glory. This is how he's bringing me and you to glory. To make the cat, he was the captain of our salvation. Perfect. He made it perfect through his sufferings. What he did, he satisfied the claims of justice. God said, I am satisfied, son, with what you did. And therefore, 
Therefore, he's going to bring many sons and daughters to glory. Those that trust and believe in him and walk with him no matter what. Then he says, for both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are all one. He's saying, I'm bringing you in unity with me. I've set you apart. I've sanctified you to set you apart, cleansed you. And now you are the set apart ones. You are not part of this world. God, Jesus said, you know, even of the disciples, Lord, I kept them. I kept them in your love. And he said, there's others coming behind. I'm going to open up the whole world, the Gentiles and everybody, whosoever will. They're going to come along too. For which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren and sistering. Saying, I will declare thy name unto thy brethren in the midst of the church while I sing praise unto thee. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children which God hath given me. I have put my trust in you, Lord, fully and completely obeyed you, fully and completely submitted unto God to bring many, you and I along, to sons and daughters of glory. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he himself likewise took part of the same. He brought everything down to that level so that he, it says that through death, he might destroy him that had the power of death. That is the devil. He come right to the earth and he died for us, took the keys of death, hell, and the, uh, and the grave away from Satan and declared victory that he did it all for us. He tasted death for us every man and deliver them who through fear of death because if you don't know Jesus you have a terrible fear you have an awful fear of death and you want to you in some people are really tormented by it who through fear of death were all of their lifetime subject to bondage and you become you become subject to bondage. But in 1 John 4.18, it says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love cast out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is made perfect or mature in he that feareth is not made, is not made perfect and mature in love. You're not letting love reign in your being. And if you let the love of God come into your life, it can mature. You grow in it. You have, you come to the place that you're fully satisfied. You have no doubt that he loves you and that he secured your salvation. You have let those things sink into your heart and mind. There is no, no room, in other words. You won't allow any room of unbelief and distrust in those things, but that you've so fully secured his love and that you know that you don't have to fear what man says. You don't have to fear what the devil says. You don't have to allow him to come around and shake your foundation and to shake your trust in God. Now, <clears throat> let's see. This is acting on the word and faith. This is true faith. And the just shall live by faith. And we, we don't allow the enemy to come along. You know, so many, when we get away from the word of God, if you're not careful, the, uh, the devil begins to blind your eyes again. He begins to trick you. You get far away from, you know, anything that we do. If we don't, you know, if you're a nurse and you don't stay with that nursing, your skills get 
they get dull. You forget things. You forget even the simplest things a lot of times. But when you leave God's word, it's the same way. When you allow yourself to back up from God's word and you then then you're leaving yourself open to hear the wrong thing. There's voices in the earth all the time. There's voices. Which voice are you listening to? Are you listening to the voice of God or are you listening to the voice of the enemy? Our thoughts, the more we walk in Jesus, our thoughts become his thoughts. And we can talk like him and walk like him and order our, you know, when he is in our lives, we know that we, the path of the righteous get brighter and brighter every day. But the path of the wicked become dull, darkness and death. It leads into death and hell, it says. I want to stay on the path of the righteous because it says it's God's light that shines on that path. Righteousness, right standing is in that path. Not confusion, not what am I going to do? We have a clear, clear understanding. Yes, there might be things that's difficult for us, but we know by bringing them to the Lord and standing on his word, he said, you can say, you promised to deliver me. I'm your child. You're responsible for me because I'm walking God in the light that I know. I'm walking in the knowledge that I know daily. And so he can only hold us responsible for what we're walking in, but don't make that as an excuse of not studying God's word. That won't fly with God. Anything we do, we have to progress in it. If you're not progressing, you're digressing. Don't kid yourself. If you're allowing the word of God to get away from you, then you are allowing your eyes to become once more blinded to the truth of God's word. And he said, the just shall live by faith. So <clears throat> we have to, those are the unseen things. And you say, well, I can't live by that. I got to see, I got to see what I, uh, you know, before I do it. No, no. The Bible says you believe it and you begin to act in it and then it manifests. That is the way God works. You believe his word. You obey his word, even though things look like they're falling apart all around you. But when you begin to say, oh, no, God's way is this way. He said that if I don't even have something I need, he would he would make it for me. I don't have to trust in what I see, what I hear, what I feel, emotions. I don't want you know, it's the old man and my brain has this path of doing the same things over and over. But when I get the mind of Christ, I'm on a total different path and I don't have to hear the enemy. In fact, I can come, become so strong in hearing God and obeying the Lord that you recognize immediately when there is even a whispered suggestion to do something wrong or a whisper of discouragement or a whisper of anything. And you say, oh, no, 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 that's not God. Get out of here, devil, in Jesus' name. I recognize you right away, you know? And so <clears throat> it says the just shall live by faith in God and what he can do. Believe him. Jesus said he would not leave us as orphans. Now, he told the disciples that. Listen, I'm not going to leave you as orphans. If you think I'm going away and going to leave you to the devil in this world again, you got to be kidding. I'm sending the Holy Spirit because now we're going to shift to the new covenant to inside. And the weapons of our warfare are going to be mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. The devil is not going to always know what's going on. And bam, all of a sudden you become a powerful tool in the hands of Jesus and that you're walking the walk and walk and walking the talk and you are listening to him then and what a mighty force when you when you're listening to him and he's saying go here though go there he's the head you're the body 
Yes. And it said, he who has sent the Holy Spirit who is ever present with you. He said, he'll never leave you nor forsake you. Jesus said or proclaimed the heart of the Father by saying, fear not, little flock, for it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. He is saying <clears throat> it thrills him, thrills the Father. And when you and I let him take care of us, the word says all things are yours and you are God's. Does that sound like he's leaving us and has, uh, as orphans in the world? Does it sound like that he has stopped moving and stopped taking care? He never abandons. He never abandons a project. God never abandons his people. Never. Now, the enemy is what's convincing you that he's not working. Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. What a man sows, he will reap. God is watching what's being sown. And he has to take care of things, but he's orderly. He doesn't come in and cause confusion. He begins, when he takes care of things, his word is sharper than a two-edged sword. It goes in and divides the darkness from the light. It divides the lie from the truth. It divides all of this thing that man is doing from what God is doing. He shares, this is not my way, that's man's way. This is, this is my way. And he, he turns things around where the enemy thinks he's got it going in a path uh, that he wants, and he's getting the victory. And all of a sudden, bam, he runs into God because God's people are praying and believing him, and he sees that God is present, ever-present, and working his agenda. Amen? But God, he is more powerful, can do something in five seconds that would take years for men to think of. And you know what kills man? It's in such a simplicity that it makes you, stuns you like a stun gun. And you sit there and you think, oh my gosh, I have spent years to build this, uh, this contraption, this thing to monopolize people and to trick people so I can be God and be all powerful. And bam, he comes along. It's such simplicity and stuns the devil, knocks out his light, knocks out his, his networks. And then he said, there you go. Now you got a taste of, you asked for it, you got it. And then he laughs, and he will allow you to laugh with him. He said, I've stretched out my hands, and no man regarded. In other words, you didn't listen. And I kept coming to you and saying, no, no, don't do that. That'll hurt you. David said, I love justice. I love judgment. Because you know why? He says, because it keeps me, it keeps me honest. It keeps me where I need to be. Because I know if I cross that line, I'm going to, the word of God is going to go into effect and it's going to knock me off my, off my feet because I know God doesn't go back on his word when he said, don't do that, don't do that. When you're doing things just to be doing things and you're not conscious of what you're doing and you're just going along with some rotten agenda, don't be surprised when he comes along. And knocks you off your feet, knocks the chair out from under the the, the uh, horrible agenda that's being, you know, put in place. Uh -uh. God never abandons His people. Say that with me. God will never abandon me. He is my Father. Father, he's a good father and no shadow of turning. In other words, he doesn't change from one day to another like a, an earthly father. Says one thing, maybe does another. But says he's going to do this, but he does something else. He says, I have no shadow of turning. There is nothing that's going to change in me. The truth is my truth. My thoughts, what I tell you, you can bank on. 
I sent Jesus to die for this word, for this covenant. And if you think for a minute, I'm going to let one tittle, one dot of it get away from me. You have another thing coming. If you think that he is like man, flip it, doesn't mean what he says, then you don't know God. You had no idea who he is. Shake yourself. Snap out of it. Find out who he is. Well, I think I've said enough. I love you in the Lord. Listen, God is dealing with all of us. God has to be front and center in our lives for them to work. He has to be front and center in the church. Programs are great, but when it comes before the Holy Ghost speaking, when it comes before the blessing of the Holy Ghost and the being able to reach out and have his way to touch hearts, and you know, he can do it through a song and all of a sudden there's a dead quiet. He doesn't want you to talk then. When he's blessing somebody, he doesn't want you to go over and mess with them because he's healing them. He's doing something in their life and you can't take the credit for it, can you? I, I'm convinced if man can't get the credit for things, then he doesn't want to have anything to do with it. And unfortunately, so many of our pastors have been convinced of this flimsy message and they want the glory they want to be the god to move uh, the mountain to sort of speak when they're doing nothing but getting in god's way child of god let us all examine ourselves paul said examine yourself whether you be in the faith or not examine your heart what are you doing put him first voice in your life Listen to him. He is not a God that can just be thought of today. And Lord, you know, I can have you. I'll, I'll, I'm in trouble right now, so let's talk. But then the next, then you're out of trouble. And he's so wonderful. He gives every man an opportunity. But then eventually he said, hey, your talk is cheap. I'm a show me God. Show me what you, what you want. You're just talking. I've had him say to me, no, you're so used to saying that. He said, you don't, he said, it's a habit. Break that habit. Stop saying that. Stop saying if I do this, this will happen. Stop man, trying to manipulate the situation and then you cause such uh, uh, confusion and disturbance to your own very own self. Stop it. Listen to me. Hear what I have to say. For I am, my words are life unto them that find them and health to all their flesh. He says in Proverbs chapter 24, verse uh, 20 through 24 there. He said, my son, attend to my words. Take notice. It's my word that's going to change you. Don't attend to something that's not going to change you. Attend unto my words. Incline thine ear to thine ears to my saying. Keep, let your eyes keep looking at them. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For it is life. It is life. My life. You will live joyous life unto those that find them. And health to all their flesh. It will bring health to your mind. It will bring health to your being. Peace is health to you. When you have a peace that just surrounds you and settles you, there's nothing greater. It's wonderful. When you have a healing take place in your body and all of a sudden you think, well, 
I went along the last few days and all of a sudden, where did that go? What happened? I've been healed. I asked Jesus to heal me. And because I've been doing his business and doing what he says and believing that he's my healer and believing he's my my uh, bill payer and believing that he does what he says, all of a sudden, I'm the healed. And your life becomes so full. Oh, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. Well, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for those that are listening to your word. I thank you, Father, that we've had this time. And Father, I ask that you take pleasure in these words, that you take pleasure in the changes that may come to uh, people that might be listening to this. Lord, that you open the eyes of their understanding, give them a spirit of wisdom and revelation to be able to see you and to pull out of any situation that could be bringing bondage, that can be bringing blindness that uh, spiritually, that can be bringing uh, discontentment. Lord, I thank you that we must remember that you are with us and that you are in us. And that greater are you that is in us than he that is in the world. And perfect love casts out fear, and we will not allow fear to take place and torment us and keep us awake and cause us to be ill and our stomachs upset and cause us to be in a, a constant upset situation where we can't think, we can't see where we need to go. But Lord, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you that you will bring us into a large place and enlarge us, Lord. Lord, I thank you. Bless us and bless us indeed. Oh, Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for answering prayer. Thank you, Jesus, for what you did for us. Thank you that you washed our sins in your own blood, that you made us new species, new creations for you, and that you delight in us when we do your will and speak your word and live your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Be blessed. Know that you are blessed. Know that God has done everything he could possibly do for us. We just need to put it into action in our lives. Come back and see me. I pray you get a chance to read some of the things that I've written. And I need to write more and put it in writing. But I'm writing also a book. I, I pray that you get an opportunity to listen to the other videos that I've that I've made, and that you are blessed in some way or another. Well, bye-bye. Come back and see me again.